Hey everybody, Boyer Shasabike Forex. Welcome to our weekly technicals for the majors. For Euro dollar, dollar yen, and pound dollar for August 6th to August 10th, 2018. The story, I think, next week, which is going to be a much calmer, quieter week as far as event risk goes, will really be coming to key levels. Because what's interesting about the end of this week, in some ways very surprising um, aspect of this week, is that the dollar was actually strong against the euro and the pound, but weak against the yen, and the data in the U.S. did not come up to expectation. We close out this week with non-farm payrolls effectively missing expectations because uh, average wages, especially the month prior, were revised downward. This month, they were up at um, 30 basis points, which is pretty good. But again, the market now is going to be questioning whether this month's numbers are going to be revised downward as well. The bottom line is it really feels in many, many ways as that the global economic recovery that we've been seeing all across the world, the, the synchronized global economic recovery, has essentially peaked. The 4% plus GDP in the U.S. was probably the top mark. We see the slowdown in Europe already quite significantly. We see the slowdown in the U.K. certainly. And we now may be starting to see the slowdown in the U.S. So in some ways, what you're seeing is essentially a risk-off trade kind of developing all across uh, the major landscape. Um, and although next week is really not going to be a big uh, week as far as event risk goes, we are coming up to some very, very key levels. So still, we've been at these levels pretty much the whole month of July and now the month of uh, August. But what I think is fascinating is that we're now coming up to the 115. We're really going to be very close to supporting the euro. Um, the yen is kind of midpoint, but looking lower rather than higher. It's, it's actually, we'll show, I'll show you in the charts, made a lower high here. And cable is still still trying to test this 29.50. We bounced off it, but not in any kind of convincing fashion because essentially, despite the fact that BOE raised rates this week, it was a communication of one and done because Brexit really started to weigh on the UK economy. UK data this, uh, this week came in pretty soft all across the board. And we're starting to see again, just as we saw synchronized recovery, perhaps a synchronized slowdown across the G11 universe. And that's an important factor to keep in mind as we're looking at prices and event risk. So let's take a look at a calendar here first. And on the calendar side, um, not a lot of data in the, in the majors. We have uh, PPI, essentially on the US side, is probably the only major um, data point worth watching. Germany has imports, exports, trade balances, so that's essentially a non-mover. And then um, the UK has trade balance as well, and UK GDP, which will be interesting to see. Now, UK GDP is expected to bounce up to four from two. But remember, um, the first quarter was, was very weak. Uh, so the bounce back here is expected. We, however, uh, we're mildly bullish uh, cable, uh, given the fact there was strong rise in consumer spending and improvement in trade, but also um, not overly so. And I think that's the key thing, that, that the um, overall quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth is not going to be nearly as impressive um, in order for UK to, uh, to really rally strongly. I mean, a 130 against the 120 is not exactly anything to crow about. And that's pretty much it as far as data goes. Well, we have CPI, I take it back. We also have PPI and CPI, which is really inflationary data. That'll be interesting to see because in, in some ways, the worst possible scenario that we could be seeing across the uh, G7 universe is slowdown in growth and an increase in prices. Now, the market is looking, actually, for a three against two on a year-on-year -year basis. Um, the core is, I believe, still relatively uh, soft, but not, you know, not, not really uh, below the 2% level. So be watching those numbers because in some ways it could put the Fed into a very, very um, tough bind. They will have to raise rates, which could in turn then send the country into a recession. So that's one of the reasons why you're seeing dollar yen really not perform. Let's take a look at the charts here, and you'll see how how the risk off stru structure really is uh, taking shape here. I think the most interesting and the most surprising aspect on the charts is how weak the euro has been. So the euro really looked like last week, like we had higher lows, ready to bust out, ready to, to kind of test the 1800, the, the upper end of the range. And instead, we just basically distributed all week long right back down towards the lows of the range. And what's interesting here, now the reason why I say this is such an important level is because, of course, we're not coming up to the lows of the post-June 
ECB meeting, somewhere around the 1500s, 1550s. And if we break the 1550s, it really creates just almost a magnetic force pull towards the 1500s, which is really going to be the true test of how much support there is. Now, the longer term SMA comes in around 1450, and I think that's a reasonable place to, uh, uh, to put your bids because I don't see the euro really crushing and, and crashing below those levels. Uh, but it's, it's a clear indication, basically, the market is um, not seeing any growth in the eurozone. And really, it feels like basically what you're seeing here is capital outflows, right? It's, it's essentially the fact that, that if growth in Europe isn't really going to come up to par, it's going to be a little reason to want to invest into European equities. European yields are at record lows against U.S. yields. So you have this massive capital outflow based upon bonds, based upon equities, and that's taking its toll on the euro. Uh, technically, it's just looking very, very ugly right now. So there is this modicum of support here at the 1550 that feels almost like it's going to be tested right at the right at the front of next week. The momentum seems to be to the downside, and once we get there, the short move towards the 1500 is almost a, almost a, a given, unless we have some kind of a sharp um, news event that that reverses our flows. So, uh, irrespective of, of how the market is feeling about a dollar. It feels like the market really is negative euro, which, by the way, of course, brings us to euro yen in our cross section because that seems to be the most natural move to the downside, given the pressures on both on both pairs. Now, looking at dollar yen, so dollar yen, um, disappointing candle off the NFPs today, which you can see the data just wasn't there to support a big bust out. What I think is more uh, problematic from a, from a technical point of view is that we essentially made a lower high here. We have a failure at the 1200 level which um, really needs to be taken out in order for, for the uptrend to, uh, to resume. So until and unless we see 1250 or 1225 at minimum where we take out the highs, um, the yen is not a buy. I mean, dollar yen is not a buy. It just looks like it's distributive, although there is just massive support at 1050. It doesn't look, I don't think it's really has a, has a uh, strong probability to go down unless trade tensions or some sort of a geopolitical escalation happens um, next week. Not much on the counter, as I said, uh, and perhaps the, the, the inflation data could push us back up, but push us back up to where? The critical question here is dollar yen really needs to clear 1215 to reestablish the uptrend. And until and unless it does that, um, you have to be very wary of this trade to the long side. Um, I would stand back and wait for some kind of confirmation before that happens. Uh, and similarly, you know, uh, cable, let me get rid of all my scribbles on cable here. Cable here is trying desperately to make a double bottom at a 2950 level. As I said, next week we, we still have UK data that's, that may not be fair. Well, we also, uh, I mean, it's everybody is, is uh, on vacation in Europe, so it's hard to, uh, to really project lots of movement next week. But if we do get more volatility on Brexit news, if, if, if hard Brexit still seems to be the default assumption right now, which is what seems to be the market doing, um, that all just weighs terribly on cable. Now, you know, we're holding this 29.50, but if this thing is given, it really, let me just sort of pull out. You'll see that um, there, well, actually, let me just go to, to the weeklies. It's, it's easier to see it on the weeklies. There's just nothing there until 28. Um, let me just get rid of this. So here we are. This is the, uh, we're in the 30s, right? And really, the next level of support comes in around 2773, right over here, this whole level. And it's not even a, a really sharp level of support. The true really, really big level doesn't come into about 25. So from here to there, quite a lot of uh, pippages. But um, look at the weeklies. It's just, look at the weekly candle. We're closing on the lows. Now, it's a, it's a small volatility candle, but still not a, not a pretty one. And if you look at the uh, overall trend, it's just really been a, there's been no bounces. It really, if you look at, What's interesting about cable here, uh, from a technical point of view, is that the bounces have been anemic at best, really for cable to, to, to give us a bullish signal. We would need a weekly candle that takes out the highs over here, which is what, 3172? Uh, um, yeah, around 3172. It takes out those highs. Essentially, we need to close a 32 or above in order for us to um, have some conviction that cable is making a bottom. So overall, it still looks like a drip, drip, drip move to the downside in cable, drip, drip, drip move to the downside in euro, especially, and this is the key thing, now that we get so close to the 1500 level, it becomes very magnetic. People are going to want to run the stops there. And um, 
yen is just kind of indeterminate um, and really needs to take out 1250 or 1225 at minimum in order to uh, to give us some kind of confidence that the uptrend in the dollar has resumed. That's how the week shapes up. I wish you guys the best luck, the best trading. Bush Lonsburg, over and out.